What is going on? Charles Botenston here. Another book review for you guys. I've been really crushing the books. It's been either audiobook or physical book. So obviously, if you look at this guy, The Amazon Way, I'm, I've been actually reading a couple of books about Amazon. I just have this, this, this desire to learn from Jeff Bezos. He doesn't really produce as much content as, say, Elon Musk or Peter Diamandis or Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins or any of these other guys. Jeff Bezos, he's kind of a quiet guy. There's a couple of interviews where he just did one. I don't think it was the Washington Post, but it was in Washington about a month ago. And you, you kind of get a real inclining to his managerial style. And it wasn't this book, but there's another book out there that is way more popular. It's actually The Everything Store. Highly recommend you obviously read that. That's more of a biographical look at Amazon. This one is how he actually manages definitely the core principles of Amazon. And it, th this was actually written by someone that was in the management team. A friend of mine actually knew who this, this author is. And essentially, um, he said that he's not working there anymore. He, he only really worked there I think for two or three years, but I'll just go over a couple of the topics. He, he has 14, 14 topics, but there's really a, a core group of six. I wrote them down. And essentially from there, that has that really catapulted them into the future. So first of all, obsession over the customer. Obsession over the customer is just, they, they've lost, they will take the customer over anyone, anyone. You know, they, they, they've lost employees, they've lost people like, uh, they, had, they had Toys R Us, they had another one with the jewelry business and they, they would lose a vendor over their obsession with the customer. So in other words, the vendor say it's a jewelry chain or a jewelry store or a Toys R Us and Toys R Us said, no, 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 we have an agreement X, Y, Z and they actually had to pay, I think $55 million to Toys R Us, Amazon had to pay them because there was something about the pricing scheme and the way that they were doing business. And the reason that Amazon did that is to get lower prices, to not market up to what it is retail in stores. And that's why people bought their toys online. And they actually talked about it. And they said the reason that Toys, toys R Us uh, really went out of business is because the majority of their business is from, obviously, during the, the holiday season, during the probably, I would assume, Thanksgiving on to Christmas and then obviously they have returns and everything else. And it's really hard to judge how many toys are gonna be bought. So Amazon said, listen, I don't know, they were, they were supposed to buy them in bulk and they bought way too many, they took a loss, but they they were fine with that because over the long run, they said they would be, they want to be known as the everything store. And Jeff Bezos has multiple times said, there's not gonna be a time where the customer wants to pay higher prices. There's not gonna be a time where the customer doesn't want their product immediately. So he said, it's always about low prices and getting the shipping as it as inexpensively and as easily to the customer same day shipping two day shipping obviously i think they said 65 million or 70 million people are prime members in the united states it actually might be a higher number or right around there take ownership of the results so this was and i'm just going to go over a couple of the the core basics of what i actually took away because i want to implement this in my business so in other words he would always ask, and this is based on the numbers. He never went on feelings, he never went on emotions. He always said, what are the numbers? What are the results? What, what is, how are we gonna adjust based on data? And if a business went for, and, it, and the reason being is that a lot of people, they're not, they're, they use data, but he said, okay, this is the metric we wanna hit. If we don't hit it, why didn't we hit it? And then you reverse engineer, and then whoever is in charge of that, the manager has to say, this is why we didn't hit it. Hit the result, hit the goal, hit the number that they wanted to for that quarter, for that year, whatever that metric was, signups, amount of users, bringing down the call time, bringing down the amount of people that are calling in for refunds, bringing down the amount of refunds. And one of the biggest things that he talked about, and it was just, just absolutely brilliant, is that even if you're not the person that is in charge of seeing something through, say a new project, say they, they launch Prime Video, you know, even though you might not be the person that sees it through, if you're the one in charge, see it through. Here's the example in real estate. So in other words, there's a lot of things that attorneys and banks and management companies and boards and buyers and other brokers do, 
but because we're the agent, we have to see it all the way through. In other words, make sure that the attorney does their thing, make sure the banker does their thing. And this the exact same thing here is, it could be on the vendor, it could be a vendor's fault, it could be the customer's fault, it could be an employee's fault, but you have to take ownership, Mr. or Mrs. Manager. That, that was a big, big invent and simplify, pretty straightforward. Leaders are right a lot. In other words, he said that if you actually make a mistake, completely fine, we actually want you to make mistakes. But if you make a mistake and then you make the same mistake, that's not fine. In other words, if you don't learn from your mistake, a lot of people say, oh, obviously, but no, no, no. He had a managerial style where he would blow up. There are just very, not in this book, but in the everything store, there's a lot of accounts that he was very similarly managing his employees. Obviously, you can't just get the quantum leap growth like Amazon has without being a little bit dictatorship, uh, without being hands-on. And one of the biggest things that I took away was that it was very close to Steve Jobs, uh, the way that he managed. It was just, it was just he, he expected the best and he expected it now. And that's very close to Steve Jobs. Learn and be curious, hire and develop the best. This is something that I want to take away as well is that they, I think the author of this book went through 23 interviews to become part of Amazon. And this is early Amazon days. This isn't today. This is like 2003, 2004. And I say early, it's obviously seven, eight years. They've already been doing probably about a billion in sales or right around there. But actually hiring talent that's better than you and or as good as you, and they had someone that, that can make a, if, if they did not live up to a certain standard during the, the hiring process, there's one person that they had in Amazon that can just say no, they're not joining. Even if everyone else said yes, even if all the managers said yes, there's one person, there's a core person, I forgot the, the, the title, but they said they can, they can make the decision not coming aboard, think big. This is just obviously in general, uh, everything I took, so this is how I, I took it away. I have, an, I have a couple of Instagram handles for my company. I have one, so I'm in real estate. So you, I have one for celebrity news, celebrity real estate news, then I have real estate news, and then I have other ones, BPI Lifestyle, which is our magazine, then we have a real estate, just the main channel. And what I noticed is that I'm not thinking for right now when I have 50 followers. I'm not thinking about our main account, which only has 500 followers. I'm thinking when we have 50,000, 100,000, a million followers. You know, like I'm thinking way into the future, 10 years, 12 years into the future, hoping that Instagram doesn't, you know, change. Obviously, Facebook has been around since 2004, so that's, that's 14 years or 15 years whenever you're watching this. And one of the biggest things that, that I took away from that is that it's not about right now, it's what, where are we going into the future, but think even bigger than where you're thinking. Another person that had this not only was Elon Musk, but Richard Bronson. Uh, Richard Bronson was always thinking big, always thinking bias for action, bias for action. I actually wrote that down as one of the core principles that we want to have here at my company is not only the bias for action, it's the bias for you learn what you need and you got to take action right now. In other words, action is the cure-all. It's the cure-all. I've noticed in, in 10 years of self-development, the, the, the only way to actually do anything when it comes to anxiety or you feel down or you feel like you're not on the right track is just do something. Pick something, just do it, just do it, move forward, make that call, approach that, that, that person in networking, whatever the case is. Earn the trust of others, dive deep, have a backbone, disagree and commit. This was actually brought up in Ray Dalio's principles. This is something that I wanna take away into my company as well, which is transparency, radical honesty, and just the ability to communicate on a factual level. Not attacking the person, but attacking, not attacking, but bringing up, say an idea was bad, or was mismanaged, or something happened in the company, you bring up what happened, not the person that did it, just the idea, maybe the management, maybe the project, maybe it's delayed, whatever the case is, you bring that up and not the person, and you have the radical honesty, radical transparency that Ray Dalio talks about in principles, the principles, I think that's the name of the book. And obviously Jeff Bezos has that as, as well, is which is just have that, that, that candor, have that communication style, which I wanna also bring aboard. 
And the last thing is obviously deliver results. And I'm gonna add in a bonus thing that over this weekend, I was watching something on, what's his name, the, the uh, Bill Belichick. And he said, do your job, do your job, that's it. If everyone does their job, if you're the secretary, if you're the salesperson, if you're the marketer, if you're the designer, if you're the social media manager, whatever the case is, if you're the truck driver, if you're, it doesn't really matter, just do your job. That's really what it comes, comes down to is that everyone at Amazon has their own job. Going back to the bias for action is that he expanded too quickly many, many, many times. Even when they went public, people were saying, you're losing a ton of money or you're, you're barely cutting even, you have no cash flow, you have no reserves for cash. And all he was thinking about was the future, the future, the future. You know, Jeff Bezos in, in a recent interview talked about how he's thinking anything that is launched now, he thought about two years ago. Anything that's launched two years from now, he's, he's already planning right now. And that, that bias for action, that, that bias of thinking bigger, and that bias of obviously planning for that and making sure everyone is accountable, you have that, the candor, the radical honesty, and the numbers, it's data-driven. It's probably one of the, and then they just raised the, the minimum wage for all the workers. I think it's a great company that you, know, you should really take away. Obviously, people say, oh, why don't they pay people more and everything else? You know, it still is a capitalistic company. You know, it's not a not-for-profit, it's not a business, it's not, there, there aren't um, labor unions involved, you know, so this is, this is a company that really has transformed the, the way that we do retail. And honestly, you can read two books. One is more the biographical, which I talked about before, which is the Everything Store. If you want to know a little bit more about the managerial style, it's a really quick read. It's only about 200, not even, 150 pages and it's the 14 leadership principles. So if you guys have any questions or any book reviews that you want me to cover, leave in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys.